Elkan Spectre DR. It's a 1x4 illuminated reticle scope. Elkan's actually owned by Raytheon, which makes cruise missiles of all things. But this has been a standard optic for the Canadian forces for a number of years. The first Elkans that came out had a rubberized housing that completely covered uh, the optic. Uh, a lot of people, when they first look at this, they don't even realize that that is an optic. <laughs> it has a very unorthodox look to it. But it's definitely military. I mean, you can tell that this was designed and made for the military. In fact, Raytheon, or especially Elkan, 90% of their sales are contract sales to the military. And one of the big kudos for this scope is that it's recently been adopted by U.S. SOCOM forces. Uh, a lot of the special operations forces use these. In fact, a good friend of mine who is in special ops uh, recently knew that I had gotten a hold of one of these for review and sent me a number of pictures of his issued uh, Elcan Spectre DR. Uh, they're a little bit different, but this is a really fascinating optic. Now, before we get even started on it, because I know a lot of you guys are going to start thinking, man, I want one of these. So I want to go ahead and give you the bad news. <laughs> these things run about $2,200, $2,300. And we're going to look at some of the reasons why I think that that's the appropriate price for this scope. This is a premium optic, and if nothing else, I think you're going to be able to see some of the great features that are out there, and it might lead you in other optic choices. But to me, this is fantastic. The Spectre is all metal construction and it has a Type 3 hard anodized finish on it. Uh, this is sort of a brown bronze color. It does come in black. Now some of the, uh, the SOCOM units are more of a field dark earth bronze look. They look a little different. Uh, they did have some overstocks with those, so sometimes you can get even those on eBay, uh, but they're pretty pricey because they're kind of collectible. Spectre DR stands for dual reticle. This is a 1x4 optic. And with this little throw lever, you can go from one power to four power that fast. One of the things about your variable power scopes is that typically you use one or two settings, and you may have five or six. This gets right to the meat of the problem. It goes from 1x right to 4x. It has a 32 millimeter objective lens. It's six inches in length. With the knob, it's two and three quarter inches in width, and it'll come up off of your Picatinny rail two and a half inches. The weight on the L-Can, 22.7 ounces, which equals to one pound, 6.7 ounces. This is not a light optic, but it's built like a tank. Right here is your battery compartment, which has a tether to keep your cap in case it's loose and you don't lose it. But right behind it is a large knob to be able to change your illumination settings. There are five dot illumination settings for red dot, and then there are five settings to light up the reticles. Now this is actually through the lens of the Spectre DR and you can see the reticle it's actually etched onto the glass so you don't have to worry about any crosshairs any problems with them coming loose and as you see below the vertical line that is a bullet drop compensator and it's marked 300 meters 500 600 700 800 900 and a thousand meters now this is for the 556 really about 600 meters is about the optimum you're going to have for this scope but they do offer this also in a 308 version and a 50 caliber version. Each of the lines in the bullet drop compensator represent 19 inches at 300 yards starting out and of course it goes on down to 600. And then when it hits the 700 it's just a circle. That gives you a way to be able to reference your, uh, the size of your target when you're firing. Now at the bottom left is the vertical subtension optical range finder, <laughs> which is VSOR. If you have a known point, you can reference this with the different meters up to about 600 meters. Now if you'll notice directly in the center of the crosshairs, the first turn is a night vision dot. You can't even see it. The second one, you're beginning to see it. Third one is low light, and then we have a little brighter, and then we have full daylight. This is really bright and it's actually 6 MOA at 1 power. Now when you switch it to 4 power, it drops down to 1.5 MOA. So that's a pretty cool adjustment system in itself. Otherwise it would really cover the target. Now with the lens covered, this is at the brightest red dot setting. We're going to drop it down. That's another daylight setting, a little bit more low light. Then we have the low light setting, then we have night vision, and then we have ultra night vision. Now you can see it now with the uh, lens covered and then we're in the off position. Now we're going to start to turn it the other direction, just keep turning it, and we're going to start to light up these reticles. This is still at night vision, so you're not going to be able to see it until now. And, then, and here we go to the brightest setting. 
you'll notice that the vertical lines, they seem to fade out toward the end. But everything up and down is very visible. Now, during the daylight, this is not as bright, but this is really made for low light, especially with the reticles. One feature I like is the sights on top of the optic. And here we have an aperture sight and we have a front post here. Uh, these are removable, so if they break or you want to change them out, you can do that. Um, I believe that it was listed that you could actually put one of the doctor little optics on top here like they do a lot of times with the ACOGs. Now here are the sights that are mounted on top of the scope and you see the ghost ring or the aperture setting and then as you go to the front you have your post. Now your backup sights are not just for close quarter combat. Uh, they are also for inclement weather. If it's raining and you get water on your glass and you can't really see through it, you can hit your uh, iron sights on top and be able to hit your target if you need to. To me, a really incredible feature for this optic is this little throw lever. You can go from 1x to 4x with just a flick of your finger. And there is a prism lens in there that actually flips. Now you notice that you can hear a click and a click. There is a silent mode and what you do is you just hold it down and bring it into place and then release it and it's in quiet mode. Now we're at 1x and we're going to turn to 4 power. Here we are at the 4 power setting. That was just moving that lever forward. Notice the movement and you'll see it of the lever. It switches and that's pretty flipping cool. Here I'm going to set the beam up. We're going to move it on to 4 power. Right there in the dead center. You can see where the lever is captivated, bringing it down, pulling it over. Real simple. I like simple. Shooting at 50 yards, uh, first group with HPR 55 grain 223. It's a four shot group. Then right here I put together a six shot group and as I was inching it up again uh, 55 grain 223. Group three I'd spread it out just a little bit on the target and then when I came in with group four it was really nice and sweet. The battery compartment is really easy to get into. Of course got this little tether. It has a 30,000 hour battery life. I'm sure that's at low settings. It's a pretty substantial battery. It's a 3 volt DL1 slash 3N. Pretty sophisticated electronic systems, of course. Anybody that builds cruise missiles, what do you expect? I found these on eBay. They're running about five bucks a piece for the Duracells. I'm sure you can get some of the generics even cheaper, uh, but why would you want to? You're gonna spend this kind of money on an optic. <laughs> of course, it does last 30,000 hours, so it's probably gonna be very rare that you need to change it. But even with gloved hands, these are gonna be pretty easy to manipulate. Uh, the battery compartment may be a little less, but definitely your reticle. Now the Spectre already has a built-in mounting system. It's in arms, the throw levers, and it fits right onto your Picatinny rail system. Has a rail here, and then of course you have your sections here. Now the eye relief is 2.75 inches, so it gives you really ample eye relief compared to the ACOG, which is about one and a half inches. But you need to make sure you mount it, and of course you can mount it, move it back and forward when you feel comfortable once you shoulder your rifle. You wanna line this bar up with the Picatinny and then just close it down. Really great secure mount. Now placed in the mount are these little slots and this allows you to take wire or zip ties and tie your levers down to keep it really secure. But I'll tell you, uh, when I first started putting this on and off, this is a bear at first. Uh, but once it got broken into, it was very easy to manipulate. But still, there's a lot of tension there. But just for security, especially in a high stress situation, having these locked down would be great. And of course to remove it, just grab the throw levers. Again, these are pretty tight, but that's great. Pull it right off. You can place it back on and it should retain zero. Now, speaking of zero, being able to adjust your sights for windage and then of course elevation. One of the kind of unique things about the LCAN is that it's not internally adjusted. 
it actually adjusts the optic itself. The optic is never adjusted except through the mount. Right here is your windage. On the front here is the bar, and what you do is make sure that's lined up symmetrically, and then you can turn right or left right here. You can use a, a quarter, you can use the, a spent shell, or you can even use a screwdriver to turn this left and right. Now the elevation knob is right here under, and it's spring-loaded. And what that does, it applies tension to the mount to keep this scope very stable. Uh, but one of the things, you're not going to inadvertently turn this because there's a little lock right here. It's a little silver lock, and you just push it up out of the way and then you can make your adjustments and then when you're finished bring it down and lock it into position and believe me it's not going anywhere now of course unless you take this out to the field you're not really going to be able to tell the quality of this glass it is incredible in fact it's really more like top line european glass it's just fantastic uh, it's really super clear and one of the things about glass and if you don't understand about scopes buying cheap optics you're typically buying cheap glass and you're not going to get the detail, You're not, especially out at distance. And two, they're not going to hold zero. I mean, there's just a million things with cheap optics. But especially with a really high-quality glass, it's going to be very difficult to beat. That's what really runs the price up on these optics. The glass and, of course, the protective feature around the glass and then everything else. So, again, while this is not a, an inexpensive scope, it's worth the money to those who need this kind of dependability. Now, I ran the LCAN both on a couple of AR-15s and on the Tavor, and it was at home on both rifles. I think that this is a great option for 5.56, but again, they do make the 308 version, which I think would be fantastic. And there are other scopes that LCAN makes, but again, they primarily make these under military contract for the Canadian military and obviously for other forces around the world. In fact, there are 10,000 of these in use around the world right now, according to LCAN. Uh, being used in the field, being used by military contractors and special forces units. So you know if those guys are using it and they're putting them through what they are putting them through, us guys at home, it'll definitely outlast anything we can do. Now the LCAN will operate to minus 40 degrees to up to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you can submerse it for two hours at 66 feet. Well, I've always thought that the Trigicon ACOG was probably the most durable scope in the world. I have to say that the Spectre DR by Elcan is probably just as tough, if not tougher. Now, I'm a big fan of the Trigicon ACOG, which runs about half the price. And, of course, it's according to the features you get on the ACOG. Uh, but there are some things about this scope that are more advanced. And that DR for dual reticle is one of them. At the 1x power... This is just a dedicated red dot. You can leave it on red dot, you can go with it. You jump up to four power, you can use your reticles. Uh, so, you know, it really gives you a lot of capability to go from a standard red dot to a 4X scope with just the flick of your finger. One of the things that a lot of people say is this is like two optics in one. It's like the ACOG and the reflex were melted together and formed the LCAN. And still, the LCAN is more expensive than both. <laughs> now, there's only a couple of things, really, that I see a downside on the LCAN Spectre DR. And the first is the weight. Obviously, it's at 22 ounces. That's pretty hefty. But, um, you know, the thing is, again, it accounts for a lot of durability. So that, to me, might bother some. For me, I think it's great. I, I, I have no problem. It really balances out, especially this Tavor. Uh, the other thing, of course, is price. And, you know, for $21, $22, $2,300, it's a lot of money. You can buy two Trigicon a ACOGs. But I think with the advancements that have on here and some of the advantages that are here with the LCAN, it is a superior scope in some ways, especially with the red dot capability. You have 1X immediately, go straight to 4, then you can reach out to your targets. So it gives you the best of close quarter and being able to be more of a designated marksman with the same optic. I know that the guys that have these that are in the, the uh, U.S. SOCOM units love them. Uh, they're just built like tanks, and they love the capability of these things. And this particular optic is a good friend of mine. Kent, he let me borrow this just for the review. And I've had it for a little while. I've been doing a lot of testing with it, a lot of shooting with it. To be honest with you, when I first got it, I thought, wow, this thing is way above my head. But I'm going to tell you what, guys. This scope... Even though I can't afford it now, one day I will have one of these scopes because this is, to me, the best out there for what it's made for. The best combat optic, to me, that you can find. The Spectre DR by Elcan, 
thumbs way up. Kent, thumbs up, buddy. Thanks a million. And guys, I know you're going to be asking. The Tavor review is in the works. Tim over at Military Arms Channel, he's spot on when it comes to this rifle. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Spectre is all metal construction. Uh, the anodizing, okay. The, the Spectre is all metal. Spectre is all metal construction. Obviously, um, okay. The metal is all, okay. And it's two and a half inches. And it's two and a half inches. It starts at four, six, eight, and ten. It's got one. Take the shot. Bad guy's not having such a good day.